Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 8.30 to 9 o'clock session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called Dockerizing Open Simulator. Our speaker is Mr. Blue Waves, a.k.a. Robert Adams. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the sessions, as well as the full schedule of events. And I'm going to paste this in here so you have a little bit of a bio as I'm tell telling you about him and his website. Robert Adams has been an Open Simulator core developer for OpenSim for many years. His Open Simulator work includes the Bullet Sim physics engine, the DSG, which is distributed scene graph simulator experiment, and many performance improvements. Outside Open Simulator, he has been a computer developer and researcher for 40 years. He has a current interest in distributed simulation and robotics. Today, he will be talking with us about adapting Open Simulator for deployment using Docker, using Open Simulator, uh, single containers and multiple containers, simulator and database, whether in standalone or in grid mode. For more information on his work, please see the website, mrblue.com. Uh, this session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have any questions or comments during this session, you may send your tweets to at OpenSimCC, and please use the hashtag pound OSCC19. Welcome, everyone, and let's begin the session. Hello, all. I'm uh, Robert Adams, and um, I'm uh, here to talk to you about um, using um, Docker and open simulator. Now, um, really, uh, so so what I'll do in the next 20 minutes is I'll take a few minutes to talk about what Docker is, and then I'll talk about a few minutes about what the configuration is to uh, that I uh, set up, um, and then I'll take a few minutes talking about how I configured Open Simulator for running under Docker, and then there'll be time for questions, hopefully. Uh, and if there's not time for questions, I have a speaker booth over in the um, uh, Expo Zone 3, uh, which I will be hanging out at, uh, so you can ask me questions there. So the particular uh, thing about running uh, things in Docker is um, uh, Docker came from, uh, in Linux, there's a whole bunch of different technologies about um, uh, isolating applications. So there was, if you've ever run Linux, you knew about Chroot, where you could change the root of a uh, application so that they couldn't get out and access other files. And over years, those um, isolation technologies got more and more complex until you could almost simulate a complete virtual machine. And so these uh, isolation technologies were packaged in several different container systems. So from a user's point of view, it looks like you're creating a virtual machine that is an environment where your application could run with all its dependencies uh, and not touch anything else on the system. Um, and um, these systems, there are several of them that exist. Docker is one, there's a one called Rocket, there's an LXC system, there's Mesos, um, and so you can go out and find all these different systems. But all in all, Docker is the most popular one of uh, container uh, systems, and uh, it essentially gives you a lightweight virtual machine. So rather than spinning up a whole hardcore virtual machine, you are uh, just uh, running a, a, a contained environment on site an existing um, operating system. Um, and so all these, and all these different packaging container systems contain all the tools for creating these different containers, for deploying them into multiple sessions, and for configuring them. And, but uh, I'm just going to focus on Docker because, like I said, it's one of the more popular ones. Um, so why would you containerize? Well, uh, one of the nice things about the containers is you contain all the dependencies. That is, once you can build an image for a container, uh, you have solved all the problems of getting all the right versions in. So some of the people, sometimes you may have run uh, Open Simulator and the 
OS has the wrong version of mono on it because there's another application that needed mono. So this allows you to build an open simulator with the version of mono that it used or the version of uh, whatever library it is. Um, you can also, they're also good for sharing. That is, uh, once you build a container, uh, you can share it with other people. Um, uh, that is the image. That is, so it's like sharing a binary, you're letting someone else use a binary, but now the binary is all packaged together with all its dependencies and everything else. Um, for the operating system, for the distributed system people, um, deployment becomes easy because now you, if you need um, three copies of a uh, a web server or a web backend, you can just spin up three copies because you have these containers that you can run. Um, um, and also, it uh, one of the nice things about it is that these systems usually have definition files. That is, you have to define how you build a container. So it actually captures uh, the uh, build and runtime process and all the little steps in it. So, uh, a quick overview. I'll teach you everything about Docker in uh, uh, one minute. Um, Docker has this conception of images, and images is you can think of it as a bootable disk image. So it has a OS uh, operating system interface, whether that's Linux or uh, CentOS or uh, Alpine or whatever base Linux-ish system you want, uh, and then you build your uh, image using the uh, a definition file called a Docker file, and the Docker file says everything that needs to be in this image, what files to put in it, so you can put in configuration files and um, uh, set up the user environment. So it's like building a whole Linux system from scratch for your application. Um, one of the interesting features of these images is they're built in layers. Um, that is, there's different, you can think of things laid on top of each other. So um, for Open Simulator, what I did was I started with um, a layer that's available um, uh, for mono. So I just said, you start with the mono version 6 layer uh, and um, build open, put uh, do the git fetch of Open Simulator, build Open Simulator, and then do the configuration for it. Um, there are um, uh, Docker has a hub where you can get different images that people have shared. So if you wanted to build a uh, um, an nginx um, based web server, you just start with that image and put your stuff on it and create your new image. Um, so you take these images and you run them in containers. So after you've built the image, you just say uh, Docker run the image name, and it'll run that image in a, you know, spins it up in a container. And then after that, you manage the container. So that's like building a virtual machine and running it. And then um, there's service definition, uh, what I call service definition. Uh, one of the features that most uh, people use with Docker is, you know, it gets into the microservices and web, uh, internet, distributed computing world. Uh, you can define different parts, uh, different uh, containers that need to talk to each other. So, like in uh, this case, as I'll show you, uh, we have a, I have a uh, MySQL server. Um, or MariaDB server that the Open Simulator talks to, and you start these up uh, with a distributed service manager. Uh, Docker comes with Swarm, which is its little distributed service manager. Uh, one of the popular ones on the internet is Kubernetes, which is uh, the big, more um, uh, a real um, business-oriented one. So here's a quick picture of what I built for um, um, for Open Simulator. So what you see here is uh, two containers. There's Open Simulator talks to MariahDB, and um, it um, uh, so there's two containers. So so first of all, there's the Docker environment. 
So Docker runs in an environment, and you can install it on your, um, if you have an individual Linux system, you s install the Docker environment uh, to run. Uh, it's available on most Linux systems. It's available on Mac OS. It's available in ARM. Um, it's available for Windows 10. Uh, you can run these on your Windows system if you wish. Um, and then they're also available in the cloud. That is all of the major cloud things, DigitalOcean, AWS, um, um, Google Cloud, they all have Docker environments that you can, if you get an image and build a container, you can just run it there. Um, the um, Open Simulator um, is, I started with uh, Mono 5, actually I started to move to Mono 6, the latest thing. Um, so I just, the doc, uh, Open Simulator image is defined by, there's a Docker file that says start with Mono 6, uh, add the user open sim, download all the sources, um, build them, and then configure them for the base information. So you just build that image. The um, MonoDB, or the MariaDB that I'm using, uh, is just one from the Docker Hub. I didn't have to do anything to it. I just say, um, start that up. And then um, I use... Docker Swarm, which uses the command docker compose, uh, which defines the fact that there are two containers, they talk to each other. Um, the Docker Swarm environment automatically creates a VPN for these pair of Dockers to run in. So their communication is even secure in this uh, setup. And then another uh, thing that you specify is what are the connections are to the outside world. So in this case, I define that the MariaDB actual DB files are outside the container environment. Uh, that has the nice feature that uh, if you take down the containers and bring them up again, they will uh, have persistent state, uh, which means your region will still be there at the same time. And also you specify the connections to the outside world. That is normally within this VPN, no one could get to it. Um, but in this case, uh, I open up the port so that viewers can get to Open Simulator. So this creates a pretty uh, secure, enclosed environment with defined connections to the outside world. So um, the project, uh, the, all the files for this are open are, are on GitHub. Uh, you can follow this link and. Uh, uh, to find it. Uh, so it includes the scripts for building the open sim image, that is the, the Docker file. It includes its scripts for starting the Docker containers. So there's little run scripts that show you which commands to run, that sort of stuff. There's scripts for the initial setup of Open Simulator. So once you build the image, the first time you run it, it has to initialize the database, it has to set up an estate manager and do all sorts of stuff. So it has those scripts. It has files for the operational configuration. So there's little scripts for uh, taking uh, your parameters like your external host name or your uh, um, a database root uh, password and initializing the regions any file and all those files. And then it has scripts for supporting the Open Simulator operation. That is, once Open Simulator is up, it'll run. Uh, you have to uh, rotate the log files. You have to, uh, if it crashes, you have to restart it. And it has uh, all scripts for those. Um, so as to configuring Open Simulator itself, that is, once you build the image and you want to run Open Simulator, uh, as anyone who's run an Open Simulator knows, there's a lot of configuration has to, uh, to happen. Um, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to have multiple region configurations embedded in the image. So like I could create an image for three or four regions and then run that image several times. Um, I needed a, and I needed a way to kind of completely replace the open sim configuration. That is, I wanted it to all um, be able to just switch it out if I had an 
installation I wanted to use the image on. So I rejiggered the Open Simulator configuration by just using the existing OpenSim defaults and OpenSim any, that is all the settings that are usually there, I nulled out all any, uh, any files in config include, and then I used the feature of OpenSimulator that reads all any files in the directory bin config. It's a, it's a feature that most people don't use, but it's really nice in that um, since it reads all the any files, you can just put anything there you want and it'll work. Um, and so you can completely replace the configuration by replacing what's in bin config, um, or you can use what's there in the image. Um, it runs open simulators, that is the image is built to run, start, um, it creates a user called OpenSim, and then it starts running OpenSim boot OpenSim, which runs uh, a setup file and the config file, uh, conf re, uh, does sed on all the any files and then starts the open simulator using screen. So it kind of works as an independent server all by itself. Um, so this uh, small print that you probably can't read is kind of all the steps. That is, you just you uh, fetch the, uh, the git image, you uh, build the image, um, you have to do all the configuration that you normally have to do to an OpenSim simulator, and then you um, just run it. So you say run, and it'll deploy the two uh, things um, and run them and connect them together and run them by themselves. So um, this is my last slide. So the difficulties I had, as like I mentioned, is uh, configuration. That is, configuration is um, uh, complex. That is, you know, like region port numbers have to occur both in the region any file and in the uh, that connection to the outside world. And um, but what I want to do in the future is capture some package configurations. That is, um, how we can do robust. Uh, there should be a, 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 a configuration for building multiple servers. Now, it's not only the uh, simulator, but a robust server separate from it and the DB server. So there can be three containers running together. Um, there could You could even package the management interface with it. That is, have a container started up with a web server and provide all the connections for that. And so I'm hoping that uh, people out there will come to my uh, uh, open source uh, repository and uh, supply some pull requests for adding some of these other images. And uh, we can capture uh, pictures of standard configurations from Open Simulator for everyone to use. And that's um, the end of my uh, presentation. And I'm open Thanks, for Ari. questions. Yep. Do we have any questions? If you do, please put them in local chat. And thanks for providing that as open source. That really helps a lot for people. Okay, trying to see if we have any questions. Do we have any from before? Interesting progress, Lisa is mentioning. Well, and people will have questions when they try to do this, and it yeah, that'll probably be the case. <laughs> and um, but is there the, a place uh, on the GitHub for them to uh, put their feedback and things like that? Yes, there's a there's a well, a normal GitHub project will have an issues section. You can put in an issues section. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, updates for yourself, you can um, add I'll pull requests, which would, I would integrate into the project. So GitHub dot com slash Mr. Blue slash open sim dash, dash docker. docker. Make sure I didn't mistype anything there. Hopefully that's the right link. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like it gets there. Okay. So we got the link there. Well, okay. So it looks like things went well. Thanks for your, uh, your presentation. Mr. Blue is very a very good presentation, and we appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, as a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the, op on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. 
So following this session, the next session is not going to begin until 9.30 a.m. in this keynote region, and it's entitled Guinevere, Learn a Language Through Games and Virtual Worlds. Also, we encourage you to visit OSCC 19 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region. There you can find accompanying information on presentations. Plus, you can explore the Hypergrid Tour resources, which are located in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speaker.